I want to deal with at least one comment this evening from the Republic of uh, Sinesia. Um, and thank you very much for, for these comments. They're always interesting, even if I don't always agree with them. You say, I note you use the word migrant and not the phrase illegal migrant. That's because I don't accept the terminology so far uh, as advanced by the two um, laws put forward by Suella Braverman. So far, they haven't been tested in a court and they are in defiance of international standards and international understandings of the term illegal. The Rwanda bill says the Republic of Sinesia is specifically about illegal migration. Well, as defined, international law requires that people claiming asylum can only do so if they are or have been suffering from persecution defined as hostility and ill-treatment, especially on the basis of ethnicity, religion or sexual orientation or political beliefs. The wording is arguably vague, however. I agree. But uh, at the moment, according to uh, Sir Michael Rycroft, the Permanent Secretary of the Home Office, um, who gave evidence to the Public Accounts Committee today, uh, he suggested that, number one, he couldn't put a figure on the um, number of people who are to, who may be sent to Kigali this year. Number two, there's about 40,000 migrants currently in legal limbo because they are judged to be illegal because they've entered the country illegally and therefore they cannot claim asylum and the Home Secretary has a legal duty now to deport them to a third country or back to their home. And it doesn't matter in their case whether they have suffered hostility, ill treatment, especially on the basis of ethnicity, religious or sexual orientation or political beliefs. Their method of travel, which is recognised as legal under international law, is no longer recognised as legal under British law. The Republic of Sinesia goes on to say, Albanians aren't persecuted under the definition of international law. It's also questionable that Indians and Pakistanis are persecuted to the extent that they are in fear of their lives. Well, um, some may be. Some may be. And some have certainly been offered asylum in our country within recent memory. The issue is quite simple, or it is to me. Thank you. If someone is standing on a French beach, they can escape their defined persecution by claiming asylum in France. They can. They may, however, have good reason for wanting to claim asylum in the UK. They may have friends, family, and they may also have benefited from the extraordinary uh, efforts by the British Council and others to teach English as a foreign language and to market that as a world-class investment in a future uh, that, um, you know, we've, we've, we've done very well about it, uh, out, out of English as a foreign language. Indeed, I have been part, uh, part, part of that process. I think um, I've got about 52 textbooks to my credit, but uh, I, I'm in no doubt that the English as a foreign language is a bit of a scam um, system, and we are keeping people in classes simply by teaching them grammar. Frankly, if you want to learn English as a foreign language, you learn vocabulary because there's very little grammar to be learnt in English. I think we should make a point uh, of insisting that people who come here and wish to claim asylum or wish to be part of our national life, that they should learn English as a foreign language and if necessary, they should um, be given a grant to do so and which should be paid back after they've found work and are contributing tax in the same way as we would for students going to university. But the 40,000 and upwards migrants who have crossed the channel and are currently in legal limbo, I cannot imagine all of those are going to be sent to Rwanda, number one, and number two, even if they were sent to Rwanda, there isn't the accommodation available now to house them. And, and I don't believe that um, on the evidence of the last year, when the Rwanda scheme effectively kicked off by forcing 
these individuals into a legal limbo that it has in any way acted as, as a deterrent. In fact, the numbers have risen. So th thank you very much for your comments. They're much appreciated. And uh, it's... Um, please keep them coming. Please don't think for one minute that because I, <laughs> I, I disagree with you that I'm not extremely grateful to you for your comments. I am, and for the time that you've taken to paste them. So please keep keep the comments going. Doesn't matter whether they're in favour or in opposition. The the point about this um, YouTube channel is to promote debate, if at all possible. 